Adobe Illustrator demonstration is going to introduce you to some of these interesting tools in your toolbar, including the line segment tool, the arc tool, spiral tool, rectangular grid tool, and the polar grid tool. So I'm going to open up this new artboard here that I've already got started. And if I wanted to use the line segment tool, I can just do two things. I can click and drag on my artboard and create that line segment tool. And notice how the stroke color or the line color that it selected was the one that I already had on my toolbar. So it defaults to the stroke color you already have selected. Now if I click away from this line segment tool, you can see there's a nice red line there. And I can also click on this item with my selection tool and I can make adjustments to the line type, uh, maybe the the way that the, the line looks, um, does, it, does it have some sort of a pattern, so there's lots of variations that I can choose here in my control panel across the top. Now one other thing that's rather interesting about this tool is that I can make very specific selections as I can with all of my tools. I can make a very specific segment and I can set those specifics. Again, if I choose my line segment tool on the toolbar, you can tell it's selected because it's darkened in here on the toolbar. If I click once without dragging on the artboard, look what happens. It brings up some line segment tool options. I can specify the exact length of the line that I want. So if I want it very specifically to be five inches long, I can do that. I can tell what angle I want it to be set at. And I can ch check whether or not I want to have that a, as a fill line or not. But if I click OK, then we can see that it behaves exactly as the parameters I have set. I'm going to make that stroke weight a little larger so you can see the result of that per particular setting. So the other tools behave similarly. So if I select an arc tool, if I click and drag on the artboard, it's going to make that Bezier curve or that arc. And it's the curved line between two points. I can certainly go back in and adjust that curved line later. But if I needed to, for whatever reason, constrain the current line that I'm drawing to a curve, I can do that. And I have the same options as I did earlier say I delete this and I just instead with the curve arc tool selected click once on my artboard it brings up arc segment tool options so I can make very specific types of an adjustments prior to drawing my arc now what if I changed it to a more concave arc for example and this using the base along the x-axis you know I can specify that it's going to be a two by two arc. Um, it's going to be open as opposed to a closed shape and click OK and there it is. It cre created my path for me just by specifying those arc segment tool options prior to allowing it to draw on the artboard. And the spiral is rather interesting as you can suspect if I click and drag we draw a spiral. It looks like a nautilus shell. Um, it maintains some of that uh, that proportions, those divine proportions, which we learn about in other in other classes. And I can make those specific settings as well. If I click once, I can specify how many segments I want that curve to have, which direction it's going to go. So it's kind of fun to play with the different options, the different things, the, you know, the radius size, just to see what kind of results you can get as you input those various settings. So there's the spiral tool. Now if you were working um, on making, you know, showing t different types of data or showing, um, you know, giving a speech on 
the relative health of a company. Let's say you were making a PowerPoint deck for somebody. And then you might want to use charts and graphs. And Illustrator comes with some very specific, helpful grid tools that can actually help you lay out the data. So this rectangular grid tool and polar grid tool are two examples of that. The rectangular grid, as you can suspect, if I click is going to bring up this rectangular grid tool options. You can tell it uh, how many dividers it's going to have horizontally across the top, vertically down the side. So let's say we have 10 categories and 5 rows. We click OK and now we have this the beginnings of, of this grid that we can then begin filling and typing in with data with the text tool if necessary. So there's lots of specifics that you can set with the rectangular grid tool as well as the polar grid tool which makes a circular version. If I hold the shift key down it will it constrain that to a circle. If I don't hold the shift key down notice what happens. It can get hold all different ways. So if I really needed this to be data shown in a perfect circle, I would hold that shift key down and click and drag. So there's an example of your polar grid tool. And again, these are just little helpful tools that um, Illustrator provides in order to help you show data or create different charts and graphs as needed. And this concludes the introduction to these particular tools located here, line, arc, spiral, rectangular, and polar grids.